this is going to be a quick video on this. It's an Ikea Gami TR2020 or something like that. Um, these are broadcast monitors. Uh, this particular one came out of the BBC's backside at the BBC Archives auction by the Peter Parker auction house. This particular one was bought non-working. It was broken. It had a particular fault, which I'll go through now. So the monitor basically looked like this. It was green. The whole screen was all green, no matter what the fuck he did to it. It was almost as if it was the green gun that all the drive was turned all the way up. Um, this is a common fault with uh, either two failure modes. The green gun or the green cathode is shorted to the grid or potentially the green drive transistor or transistors have gone short. I had checked the CRT and isolated the heaters and, and measured across using an, an ohm meter across the green cathode and all of the other connections. There was no short circuit. Fantastic. And then I had a look at the RGB drive board. This is the one that's out of that uh, piece of machinery. Now, we've got pairs of transistors here, two per gun. So this is for the green drive. If we just measure between these two pins. We have a short circuit. Now you can either change the transistor to common part, bung the part number on eBay and just buy another one. Or if you're like me and you've got a broken one of these monitors, you can just rip the drive, the RGB drive board out of it, bung it in, jobs are good in, and it's fully working again. These monitors are fantastic. They are obviously broadcast quality. This particular one was owned by the BBC. I don't think it's seen much use because the CRT is fantastic. It doesn't bloom when you turn the brightness up all the way. Um, I've just finished doing a quick service to it. I've adjusted the convergence. I've done gun balance uh, or, the, or drive color balance, however you'd like to say it. I've done the geometry. Uh, I've already said about the convergence. I've gone through and I've checked the power supply. I've, me I've measured the ripple current. There is none, thankfully, or it's very low. I've adjusted the main HT line. Perfect. 12 volts is dead on. I've cleaned these edge connector board type things. These are very temperamental. Some of these boards use these silver circle electrolytics. Now, if you wanted to, I mean, if they had started leaking or if they weren't a good batch or whatever, you could potentially replace them. I'd suggest not using tantalums because tantalums have a different characteristic. They aren't exactly the same as electrolytics. They are known to short too. Especially if you're having them in, in between power rails, you've got to make sure that the ESR on this stuff matches the um, components that are in there, otherwise you'll put unnecessary stress and actually potentially cause issues on particular power rails. So this is the uh, main processing board. And I mean, if you were to recap that, for example, and use tantalums on it that didn't match the original specifications, you could end up potentially causing damage to fairly expensive and cause some serious damage to um, really sensitive components. I've uh, adjusted the focus, blah, 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 whatever. Um, and I'm just doing a bit of a soap test. Bear in mind, I'm only putting composite into it and it looks really good. I'm really happy with this picture. If we just go to um, the pattern gen, and I turn down our chroma signal. Looking at the multi-burst frequency response, we can see that this monitor actually does a really good job. Um, the reason I say turn the chroma off is because, because we're feeding a composite signal into it. It interferes. Um, and I'm not too sure why that is. But uh, it's an artifact of using um, combined chroma and luma signals. I'm sure if you fed this video into it, you wouldn't have that problem. If we go back to our whatever YouTube video we're watching, me talking about that Mark 1 Philips 8833, 
I've actually got two more of those. They are Acorn branded versions or variety of that particular monitor to do up. Fantastic, I can't wait to, to finish that video. But yeah, these monitors are fantastic. If you, if you want to get one, please do. The line structure is fantastic. You can see scan lines, really good definition picture. Um, not a lot can go wrong with them. They're very easy to repair and work on. Service man manuals are on the Internet Archives. If you go to the Internet Archive website, look, it's my workshop, me, it's me. Y you know, it's fantastic. They are very easy to get going again when they go wrong. There's not a lot of things to go wrong with them, to be honest. Now, you might remember I actually mentioned I had spare parts for one of these. So, I had one. Um, not one that was in an amazing condition, but I had originally bought one from the uh, auction house during the first BBC Archives auction, the Phase One or something like that. I didn't have enough, I didn't have any more space for one, so I ended up selling it to someone on that collective CRT page. Uh, they paid four hundred and fifty quid for it. Could you imagine? What an idiot! Anyway, he must have realised that he paid too much for it because when he got it. He claimed it didn't work anymore um, and that it was damaged and all of these things, even though I provided him photos and so on, videos and things to show him that, well, it wasn't. And he sent it back to me in a box with one layer of bubble wrap kind of just draped over the front of the tube face and it arrived in pieces. PayPal didn't want to know. They're there to just give the buyer back their money. They don't care, you know. Um, so I was left with a parts unit so here we are um and you know the i mean the tubes in these are probably just standard tele tubes right something like that but it's we're not paying for the tele tube we're paying for the quality circuits which are in this particular monitor and really this is on par with a lot of the other stuff that i'm seeing online um certainly with rgb going for it it is flawless absolutely flawless the only crying shame is that there's no audio amp in it. I mean, even if there was a mono shitty speaker, um, some shitty loudspeaker, that would be better than nothing. In fact, you've got a lot of empty space floating around here. So I'm sure you could use a couple right angle uh, pieces of uh, metal or something and fabricate something and, and, and mount, mount it here. Put a, put a loudspeaker. You can use one of these, one of these unused holes for a volume control, I'm sure something like that could potentially work. There's 12 volts all, all around the thing actually, so you can uh, can make that happen fairly easy. But yeah, make sure that you do clean the edge connectors on these uh, sliding boards. They do have a habit of getting dirty. Watch out for cold solder joints on the back of the edge connected board. There's a lot of weight on these um, and you will, you will find broken uh, broken solder joints. Um, also, make sure that the power supply has had its solder joints touched up. Again, you know, with the amount of hours we're finding on these things used in broadcast settings, they will fail. But this particular one, I've just done, um, I've gone through it from top to bottom and I'm really happy with it. Right, well that's a quick video. Please subscribe if you're interested in this type of thing. There are going to be a couple of videos coming up on two Acorn branded Philips CM8833 Mark 1s in an odd case. They're very odd machines that don't have composite input, uh, but instead have some, it, it's just RGB as standard, which is really strange. So watch my video coming up on those two monitors. We'll be out soon in the next few days. Until then, please subscribe, ring my bell, and uh, have a watch of some of my older videos or look at some of my weird, funny posts on the CRT Collective. I'm currently having m mainstream customer repairs on hold whilst I sort out some damage to my workshop, but hopefully we'll be back in action again probably around next Friday. Please check my Facebook page for any official updates. They'll be posted there. Thanks, guys. Cheers. See you in the next one.